Hello, my loves, and welcome to this tutorial for a junior high guide, a tutorial to guide your creation for an assignment we are going to do today. So what is this lesson and skill all about? What are we going to be doing? You're going to create a slideshow using Google Slides to teach the fifth graders all about sixth grade and Hudson Junior High School. Oh, why does this matter? Who cares? What's our purpose? So we're actually going to share these slides, or I am, with the fifth graders, with the fifth grade as a tool for them. It also helps us with our communication and Google skills. So communication is anytime you're sharing information and figuring out how to share the information that's in your brain with other people and have them understand it is a hugely important skill that all adults must learn and master as well as students because it lets people know about your beautiful thinking. Plus, it's going to help us with our Google skills. Mrs. Burt said that you guys love Google Slides, so I'm sure you're far better at this than I am, but that's okay too. Our learning goal, I can use Google Slides to communicate information. Let's get started. So what do you have to do? You're gonna create one to three slides, so one, two, or three slides, to teach the fifth graders about life in sixth grade and the junior high before we closed, okay? So when we are actually going to junior high, not the learning from home portion. What do you have to do to include full credit? So you need at least two tips or suggestions for the fifth graders to succeed. Proper capitalization, punctuation, and spelling. It has to be visually appealing, AKA nice looking, and also has to be readable. So that means at least one photo that makes sense and goes along with the slides. Colorful slides and text that are readable. They're not too busy or small print. They're easy to read or understood by a fifth grader, right? The fifth graders and their families are our audience. So we have to make sure that the information makes sense to them. And it also has to be appropriate and helpful for the fifth graders and their families. You want to include your favorite part about sixth grade. And one thing you wish you knew about coming to about sixth grade before you started. You also have to make sure that you're doing this work all on your own. It's your own original writing and creation. Of course, you could talk about things that maybe you want to include, but your writing has to be all your own, all unique, all yours. When is it due? Well, you have to get it to me by Friday no at noon on May 1st, so a week from today, to be included in what I send to the fifth grade team. So here are some tutorials on how to make awesome slides. I can, I'm going to show you how to choose from a template. You're going to or create new slides and changing the template. When you're starting this assignment, you're going to start with blank slides, blank slides. It's a blank slate. You can also choose slides with a pre-made layout and you can choose from a different template. So for example, we scroll out of there. And the great thing about Google is like, if you hover over everything, you're going to be able to figure it out, right? So this one is a new slide. You can either click that arrow down. And this is this, the template that I have on this one. So like, oh, I like the way this slide works. Maybe I would do this. And then you can add the text. They're pre-made for you. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, they're already there for you. If you want to change the template, you go to format. Nope, I got it wrong last time too. And then you can change the theme. So I'm going to give you blank slides, but you can also change it if you want to. Like, oh, let's see. I happen to love the color pink. I'll choose this one. So it's going to take 20 years for it to open up. It's changing it over. There are different ones. It's totally up to you. It's still working. Okay, so change it over, right? Change the style, change the fonts. This one looks a little bit different. Interesting. I kind of like it. I like the pink and the teal. Okay, but if you change it and you're like, oh, that's gross. What do I do? I don't want that. Easy peasy. You can just go to undo and it'll switch it back for you. It's the greatest part about Google, right? You can just hit undo if you make a mistake. So that's how you insert to slide. You can do blank. I already have the blank slides for you. It's up to you. Now, on every slide, you have to have a text box. And on this part, we're going to go over how to make those text boxes, right? Choosing fonts and sizes, changing the colors, highlighting borders, and making sure that they're legible and visually pleasing. So if you look at these two little pictures here, contrast is when you use two different colors. A light color next to a dark color is easy to read, but if both the text and background are the same darkness, it's almost impossible, right? If you look at this, the white text on the darker or the light text on the darker background is easy to read but dark on dark is way too hard 
So when you're creating a text box, you want to make sure your font is readable. Somebody can read it, read the font itself, the size and color. You want to use bold, underline, italicize, and text highlighting to call attention to things. You also want to use proper capitalization and punctuation and spelling. And you're going to use enough information to communicate your point, but not too much that it's too hard to read or not enough that it does not give information. I want to go back to. So if you want to use bold, underline, italicize, and text highlighting to call attention, that makes total sense, right? At the top here, I have this highlighted to call attention because it's the header. But you'll see that not everything is using those font styles because otherwise it just looks like somebody's yelling at you. So with this part down here, you want to make sure that you have enough information for your readers to understand it, but also not too much that it's too hard to read. Let's look at some terrible slides. Look at that. Oh. So what makes this bad? It's too busy, too hard to read. There's a poor photo choice here. Like they're trying to be creative, but it just makes it impossible to read. The text is also really long and it's kind of it's definitely hard to read and it's a long text. So poor photo placement, poor layout. Now, this one here. Now, just because they can choose different fonts, it doesn't mean that you should, right? Because look, those make it really hard to read. Just because they're fun doesn't mean that it's a good choice. The background is also super busy and the photo is really hard to understand. So if you are creating a text box, like a text box, that's a text box, I'll show you what to do. Get rid of these themes. We don't need that anymore. Get rid of it and start from scratch. So you go here to the T in a box, text box, you click it, and you draw however big you want it to be, release the mouse. And then you can start typing. Hello. I miss you so much. My internet is being super slow. Okay. So if you look, it should realize that I have made a typo there. Maybe. Much. Well, didn't, but I did. So if I want to, now I've made my text box, I can change the font by going up here to font. Like, I'm not going to do that because it's in cursive and fifth graders can't read cursive. But I like that one, but want to make it a little bit bigger. But if I want like 100, it's like way too big off the page, right? So, oops, I did that last time too. Click the wrong thing. Come on, there it goes. So I maybe want to make it not so big, but still able to read. I can change the color by going here. I can make it underlined, italicized, bolded. It's up to you. The bold makes it kind of hard to read. I can also put this as a fill color. It's like dumping a giant gallon of paint into the text box, which actually makes it look kind of cool. It's like, you know, I'm a sucker for pink. I can do that. I can add a border. If I go to border weight, these are numbers. It's just the thickness of the border. So if I do like that. I can change the color. I like purple too. So let's see if I want to change this font color to be a little bit more contrasting. Maybe I want to do white. You can see. Oh, so that's the, that. That is the text highlighting, which obviously it's like taking a giant highlighter to it. But if I hit undo, I didn't want that. I wanted to change the text color. So here we go. So I think the white on the pink is a little bit easier to read with going with that contrast. But again, you want to make sure that it's eligible, legible, that you can actually read it. You can also, if you highlight your text, you can change the alignment. Maybe you want to have it right in the middle. You can have it spaced out more. You can add numbers, bullets. It's, it's all up to you. Now, if you want to insert photos, because you do have to put a photo or graphic or image in here, you can search through Google Slides. You can use Google Images, but you also want to make sure that you're being safe on the Internet and making good choices. So you also might want to add a caption to your photos to help explain. You want to make sure that your photo is appropriate and goes with your content, right? Just because putting a dog, just because Raleigh is cute doesn't mean that I need, it makes sense to go with the sides, right? Don't put photos just to put photos. Make it add to your communication. You can use your own photos. Just add from the computer. If you want, you don't have to. You can also use the search function within Google Sites. You can use Google to find images. So if you, so this is, I'm working on my Chromebook, so it's not my computer, but I have emailed a photo of Raleigh. Look at him, he's so cute. So I emailed it to myself and then I can download it and then I can copy it, come back here and paste. Oh, there he is. 
in his magnificent glory. I can also, if you go to here, you can upload from your computer. You can search the web. This is what I did. When I was doing the women's um, writing about women. So, like, if I wanted to find one, a uh, Michelle Obama. And then I like this one. And then you hit insert. As you could probably tell there, I came up with some funky ones, right? So you want to make sure that it's a good photo because fifth graders are going to be looking at these. So it has to be appropriate and has to make sense. You can also add some shapes to your slides. You can add shapes and lines. Again, you can use Google Images. You still want to make sure that they are safe and quality and that they are legible and appealing. So it, shapes can help draw attention. It can liven up your slides, but you want to make sure it adds to the information, not distract from it, right? Look at these. Do those add anything? No, they just kind of clutter it up, right? But if you want to add them, so for example, like look at this slide, I'm not going to make it too big. But look, it's so busy, there's a bunch of shapes, it's impossible to read, right? So crowded. How is anybody supposed to read that? But if you want to insert slot shapes, you just go up here to where it looks like the shapes and they have different ones, right? So like a little heart, if, again, it has to make sense. You got arrows, sometimes the arrows can be really nice or a call out, you can always put something like that. And then you could put a text box on top of it, it's up to you. So now that we're through this, you're about ready to get started on your presentation. So let's do some brainstorming about what things you can include. So some things you have to include, remember, two tips or suggestions for fifth graders to succeed, your favorite part of sixth grade, and one thing you wish you knew before coming to sixth grade. And again, this is all when you were already at the school, not when we're doing this online learning. So questions you could ask yourself, what is something you wish you knew about sixth grade before starting? What's a strategy you use to succeed? What is something that surprised you about junior high? How is sixth grade different from, than fifth? And remember, all of this has to be your own new and original writing that's appropriate for fifth graders and their families. These are just some ways to get your brain thinking, right? Because you have to have some suggestions, your favorite part, and then something you wish you knew. So what is it that would make your, what, if you had known before coming to sixth grade, what would have made things easier? What's something that you learned that is really helpful for you? So you're going to create one to three slides. And again, it's all about being in school. You have to include two tips or suggestions, proper capitalization, punctuation, and spelling. It has to be nice looking and readable. So one photo that makes sense and goes along, colorful slides and text that is readable, but not too busy or small. Easy to read and understand. It's appropriate and helpful for fifth graders and their families. Includes your favorite part of sixth grade. One thing you wish you knew before coming to sixth grade and work that is all your own original content and creation. It's totally up to you on how these look and what you say. And I can't wait to read them. Again, by noon on Friday, if you want it to be included, what I send to the fifth grade teachers. Now it's time to put your skills to work. You're going to use what you already know about Google Slides and what you learned here to create. You must do your own work and email me, of course, if you have any questions or concerns. Love and miss you all. Hope to see you soon.